You're not going to hear someone talk about doing a thousand burpees on a podcast. Like, it's not that much of a thing. It's, a a thing. it's not that much of a thing, is it? Unless it was a thousand burpees for, for a thousand, thousand days. days. Or if you get on which roll. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck. But yeah, but, I don't know. But, but, but also, also equally... Easy. Like none of us are really runners. What well, like we run a bit now, but we're not like you wouldn't have at the beginning of this last year. None of us would have called ourselves a runner. So there was that. There was a step up there. But so, but we also don't. We all feel worse after a thousand burpees. Like collectively, I know. we all feel worse. That's the like, funny thing. So we ran a long distance, but the thousand burpees has had much more turmoil as a group. And so the the run was hot on the day harder. Yeah. Hundred million percent harder. The pain I was in on that day different level right but, but then two days later to back to normal i was a bit sore that literally we saw you the day after didn't we well, when you the we first were one. here yeah. yeah and then i was a bit stiff but like not not too bad monday fine i think we and you worked out monday didn't we like fine and but then, like, like the other this, thing is actually we we all had an amazing sense of achievement after the run yeah but i didn't feel that this is what i mean this is this is what i mean yeah. i did feel we finished and everyone, like, I was last by about 20 minutes, I think. So, but, like, so when I finished, I think soon after a couple of people left, and then it was just me and Sam so sort of sitting here, and it was a bit, and, I, and I, not because of that, but in general, I just didn't feel like I'd achieved that much. I don't know. Well, I think it's you're stationary, well, not stationary, but you're in, like, one location doing a repeated exercise over and over and over, rather than doing, a, a, like, a majestic run across the country. Yeah, and <laughs> also, when did you decide to do the run? A while back, with a big build up. We talked about yeah, it in summer. So there you had that time in your head. There's anticipation like, yeah, for it. Because we, because we, it would never have been the same yeah. as a thousand burp. This is a different thing. Yeah. But you still had that anticipation. Yeah, I suppose. Yeah, so it builds up a little bit of like. And we made an event out of the run where a thousand burpees. I think there was a text like two days before. Should we do it? New Year's Eve, all right, done. Mm. Yeah, because so you, meant, you I mentioned it. We were joking Christmas. about it with Bro Society on the Wednesday night. You were joking about doing it, well, knowing yeah. you were going to do it, and then the next day it was being done. Yeah, because you mentioned it, and then that was just a case of setting a date, and I said 31st, and yeah. we've done it, didn't we? The day but before the burpee challenge. I think it'd be good to... Um, yeah, whose idea was that? Whose? To, like, not include him. Louis. <laughs> Louis' idea not to include him in the challenge. <laughs> the thousand burpees we've done. Yeah, I'm afraid of that. <laughs> 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 but Should we just include him? Mate, I... I know yeah, you've, you've been carried. You've been carried on your life. In my life, I'm already on a thousand, mate. I'm cool. <laughs> I'm counting them. And but going back to like, the run, the event, we did make an event of it, and that was for the whole uncommon thing, really, which is what I asked for. I still think a thousand burpees is uncommon. Do you know what I mean? But even if you even if you go in a gym and people are into CrossFit and stuff, they're not gonna do a thousand. Anyone that knows that a burpee is would not want to do a thousand burpees. Well, they That's wouldn't have an email because it's a hundred minutes long, would they? Mm. Exactly. Like, yeah, 100 minutes. Like the, the, me and Bobby finished on 105 minutes. So that was like, uh, we had like five minutes of extra breaks. If yeah. not, it was 10 on the minute every minute. Yeah, no one would want to do it. But it didn't feel like. I don't know. I think it's a different. It's a, it, I think it hurt just as bad, but in a different way. It was a much shorter period of hurt as well. Mm. Like, an hour and 40 minutes of hurt is a lot easier than six hours of just hurt. Just turn off with the blood volume. Like I think the run, I think all of us, well, you had 16 hours of hurt, mm. but like all of us would have had a period, like about 70k in, I really started hurting, like, and from that point onwards it wasn't really that enjoyable, yeah. but the first 70k was as easy as the first few burpees, it didn't feel like I'd done much. Yeah. So like, I, I wish that was you, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this all the time, like, you know, man. I wish I was but, like, that, but that's what I mean, like, so who actually had a harder day? Probably you by a long way, because... Yeah. I actually had, I was enjoying it. I genuinely was enjoying the running. I was, then... I was thinking that about like these sort of challenges and whatnot. And like, for example, if you recover after a thousand burpees in two days, you're like, oh yeah, cool. Yeah. Mm. And you finished earlier and you were the fart and whatnot. Like that, because it's personal, that's then not as hard to you, is it? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Relative. So someone else could do it. And they, that is the hardest thing they've ever done in their life. That takes them to a dark place. Like, do you know what I mean? Like, and then they've then worked, they've then had to work that much harder to do Different the same thing. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I also think we've not just had a whole month of burpees, like regular consistent burpees of then doing a thousand. We've just gone blindly in with a thousand. So the dom, I mean, like doms I've had, I've not trained those areas yeah. of my body for how oh, long. Oh, mate, I can't explain to you how little I could move today has been the best day of me being able to move. But before, 
I couldn't, I literally couldn't get up. I, I just couldn't get I'm, up. I've never had all body dogs. doms before, because no. normally, you, like, when you sit doms at the gym, it'd be leg day, that, then you oh, couldn't move. Yeah. But, like, or arms and then chest, where now it's like, yeah, but, oh, nothing works. But, but even if you do full body in the gym, it's still not as bad as that burpee one. No. Do you no. know what I mean? But, like... But have you ever done a two-hour workout of full body in the gym, like actually no. training for the full two hours? Yeah, like you don't. Yeah, you, yeah, you don't. You, even you'll if you're talk, in there an hour and a half, you'll, you'll be talking, yeah, you'll be resting yeah. between sets. sets. We didn't. There wasn't really any of that. Like absolute max rest you gave yourself was a minute, probably to like. I think, like even the difference yeah. of like running for ninety minutes compared to doing weight training for ninety minutes, like you never like that ninety minutes of weight training is probably about fifteen minutes of work. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, even even running, running for ninety minutes, actual output is, yeah. is, is crazy. Like the difference yeah. output. The output of the burpees was intense. Yeah, so intense. Well, I watched on like burn see... 100 calories. I was like, I don't think yeah, you quite got that right. I was going to say, I'd like to know what you burn. So what would like, what you said, you said to me, was it yesterday or whatever, you were like, um, oh, like if you work with people who do this sort of stuff, like... I don't, not uh, done like a thousand burpees. Well, not a thousand, but, but like endurance <laughs> If we came to you and said that though, what would, what like, would your... Yeah, like for be? example, this year, if I said, right, I'm going to do loads of stupid shit off the cuff, not necessarily always trained for it. We're going to do endurance events. We're going to hike. Like, what would you do? You'd have to build the, like, digestion. Like, you'd train your digestion. Really? Yes. Like, when you look at things like, um, so if you looked at training peaks on when I worked with um, Luke in the Tour de France, or just after the Tour de France, so we started his data for the Tour de France. We were going to, like, the World Cycling Championships. He was getting like five to seven thousand calories in a day whilst on the bike, uh, or that was like his like expenditure. You think just eating that normally, like you'd just be bloated as well. Yeah. Like, you just you'd be shitting so much as well. But like, and having like in usable food as well, not just having junk food all the time. It's crazy that there's actually an Amazon documentary because um, we were working together and it was like on the team you could use their nutritionist or you get paid more if you use someone else. So he was working with me and um, a couple of my mentors as well. And then the next season, there was an Amazon documentary. So they all had to use the team's nutritionist. Mm-hmm. But you actually see, like, it's a chef going around and then cooking them all these clean meals and stuff. And actually, it's, like, pretty cool to see how much they have to eat in that. But it would be just building up building up the actual content that you can actually take. But you see professionally eaters. Getting used to eating yeah, a lot, you see basically. professional eaters. Like, there's a guy, um, Beer Meets Food, like, his channel on YouTube. It was crazy, like, how much he'll eat. But he said to train himself like that, as if it is like a sport. Mm-hmm. So that in itself would be hard enough to do. But you said you had, like, two slices of toast before the burpees. If you'd done that while actually, like, attempting to, like, run, your mind would still be going, but your body would break, break, yeah, yeah. break up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, so you'd have to, like, get your body able to utilise that. Yeah. I think that's why like And also like sorry to cut you off, with like the slower you are in the be- best possible way, like when we look at like VO two max and the capacity you're working towards it, the more fat adapted you could be. What do you what does fat adapted mean? So like the more you could fuel your body off fats rather fat. than carbs. Right. Which should work a bit better. Because if you So doing like the long runs, for example, you'd potentially eat more fats. Yeah. So which are gonna be so if, we, if we were going to run four marathons in four days, what would a nutrition plan look like for that? Not if. <laughs> <laughs> Hypothetically. Yeah, I'm asking for a friend. A friend. <laughs> <laughs> you almost ran four in one day. Yeah, yeah, that's what I mean. So we ate, but we, <laughs> none of us really planned a nutrition plan for that. I made some wraps full of peanut butter and jam. That was probably the most... Really good. They worked, yeah. but like, so there, it wasn't very though, sophisticated. Like, as you said, like, there's a science to saying, here's what an ideal plan would be, Yeah. but what can you actually get by? Yeah. Get by with, like having the carbs like throughout I think it's like 70 80 grams of carbs an hour that the human body could this is me going back to like MSC days like 2016 so I think it's like 60 70 80 grams of carbs an hour what's MSC masters like when oh. that's doing that and that's um, what we can actually process in theory yeah but then well, you, that's like, what your body's allowed your digestive tract digestive should be able is, to is that yeah. much if you think there's what four how much what does that four look calories. like calories what would that look like 80 grams. Yeah, of carbs. Bananas probably like, like 20, 25, 25, 30 in a banana. So like banana. Three, three bananas. So it's a, it's a decent portion of rice, isn't it, essentially? Yeah. yeah. And then, but then, like, expending that as well. Like, and that's going to depend. Like, you three have got different body types, so you're going to expend, like, more per hour or less per hour, depending on weights and muscle mm. mass, everything. And then, 
or is your genetic makeup are you more prone to like burnt fat like this is why like doing that sort of thing is testing new, like training with different nutrition protocols yeah like is someone going to benefit more of a handful of nuts than having a gel or something yeah so someone might be work better with a gel and someone yeah. else might work better with a Mars bar I yeah. struggle like, so much on 100k I struggle so much with eating every time we stopped to eat I felt like I need energy but I couldn't even eat and digest it I mean right as soon as yeah. we were like let's go we're going again I just it hurt to run and then drinking I even, as well see I didn't well, want to eat I wasn't I hungry yeah. it was like f- you're like oh, forcing no, yourself to eat I wanted to eat, to eat most right. of the time I was ready by the time I got there every time I was like yeah, I need so to I get something in then, then like you'll have carbs and then you'll try and have water and that'll just slosh the carbs around in the stomach yeah, rather than what I found like like you need something to help with osmosis, like something like glutamine in there to help it actually get through the stomach lining where it's actually going to be used. Like what? Like glutamine. What's glutamine? L glutamine and amino acid, just to help pull it through. So what would what what foods would that be in? I would just supplement it really? and get it in there. Um, so I found like I because I was or drinking like, like hydration solutions. Right. Because I was drinking throughout the the run. So I think that was all right because then I was like taking it and had like electrolytes like in with it well, and I was yeah. sipping, sipping, yeah. sipping. That's what I was doing. And then I think that's why I was okay to eat because you were eating and drinking more at the same time, weren't you? Because mm. you, you had your bottle have your with you and have a pack on. So I think like, by the time I was there, I was sipping. Like, is going to be better. Sipping, than yeah. I, was, I had, I had a couple, of, I was couple of little bars while we were out on the run, and then actually when we got in, then I think I was like, you know, when you eat a little bit and then you get hungry. I think yeah, that yeah, was yeah. happening to me when I was back. See, I cra- I know as well. I I crave sugar all the time. Period. Like, I don't know. Something in like I'm probably addicted. Don't get me wrong, but like sugar. So like on the run, I felt like for my fuel, I am drawn towards like fruit, Skittles. It's like a thing that just happened to be Skittles. <laughs> I don't know. Like yeah, but like drawn more towards them than like the carbs. I don't feel the need for it. And they are the carbs. Yeah. And sugar. If carbs are basically sugar. They're just going to be fast and slow. Right, when I think of carbs, yeah, I yeah, think like of like rice. Potatoes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just what I think, I just think potatoes, carbs. Man. This is how much I know about this sort of shit. But like that's, that's what I think. Carbs. But it's good to have a mixture of both, right? Well, yeah. 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 Like, but if you look at an Ironman aid station, there's flat Coke. I like flat Coke. Like that, Ca- that caffeine was, and sugar. <laughs> caffeine and sugar. That is one of the things which like, I'm pretty certain it will still be. This is like a couple of years ago when I was working with more the endurance side. But like, on the aid stations, they'd have flat Coke. Yeah, yeah, like I, every bike ride I've ever done, people will be shaking up cans of Coke, letting the, so the steam out and then necking them. Which is so funny from a health perspective. You burn everything else, yeah, but everything else aside, a Coke cleans penny coins. Do you know oh. what I mean? So like from, but, a, from a clinical and a health holistic health whole plan, this yeah. is for one it's, day. It's, it's yeah, running Iron Man healthy though. Touche, yeah. yeah. No, it like, uh, running exactly. any, I don't think is healthy. Like, is I find healthy this when you go into the mountains as well. Like you, I eat this clean diet the whole way through. I literally go into the mountains. I've got like, chocolate bars. I've got all this crap in my bag. You just want calories like. in. Do you know what? Hiking, yeah. Best thing about hiking? Yeah. Kendall mint cake. Oh yeah, exactly. One of the best ah, things ever. Like if you are feeling love down, love put a bit of that in. It's, it's better than like, coffee. It's literally. Sugar, sugar and mint, mint sugar flavored sugar. Yeah, <laughs> mint flavored sugar in a bar. It's amazing. They use it that the north thing. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. first ever the they took it, didn't they? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Didn't you use that on a date? You were saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> like it's mad, but yeah, it's, it's great stuff. Like, but you do have a crash afterwards, so you have to keep putting it in. Because I'm not used to taking in like sugar that often, like yeah. as in pure sugar. So, that will so then, then I spike, and then I'm like depressed on the way down because I'm right at, like I'm not happy. Like, and that's walking. why we have to try different stuff. Yeah, like, you have some sugar and you're not used to it, and then suddenly you just need to shit somewhere, and there's nowhere, there's nowhere yeah, like, anywhere yeah, to go. Yeah, yeah. End up I, doing s- I suppose this is, or something. this is where the training comes in, isn't it? Yeah, you're doing not just training, training in your body like, externally, internally as well. I think I might, yeah. I, I, and your mind. Because if you think about eating, like, we've got the mentality like, we'll eat when we are hungry, mm. but that might be too late. We'll drink when we need to drink. That's a good point. Might be too late. I heard that before. I think you've said before, if you're hungry on a long ultra run, it's too late. You're done. You're yeah, done. You'll never catch up with that. Because you're not going to yeah. catch up. And I, that's what so happened to me on that first marathon. I got hungry at about 21 miles in. You mean the packet of Skittles in. didn't fill you up? Yeah. I got hungry about 21 <laughs> miles in. 23 miles, we got back to the train station. I ate loads. No, I just couldn't go. I just could barely was. It was too late. Um, yeah. But yeah, it's going to be interesting I, to I try. Like it from... I, I have to do it. I, I, I do want to take it all more seriously. Like, I know, I now know that almost anything we come up with an idea, I can do it. 
but now it's like, now let's do it properly. That's five. That's basically yeah. five. We've yeah. been doing it. Like, we've been getting away with it at yeah. this point. Yeah. And I think the 100K was the first thing we actually put a bit of thought into. Like every, yeah. every ultra that we've done, we've done 50s. we'll have a bar in our pocket yeah. and like yeah. one gel. That was the first time we actually <laughs> ate properly yeah. and had it's enough water. It's preparing of where to take it as well. Like, yeah. I've yeah. seen people that I'm at, like taping sandwiches to their crossbar. Yeah. So then they. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, you've got. Like, I think with cycling, you've got to eat on the go because you, yeah. you are burning so many calories on it. You you have to. At least with running, I think you can probably get away aid station to aid station. I suppose with cycling as well because you're not like Ooh, it's you not. Yeah, exactly. you, can eat, you, you can eat. You can eat a full meal. Just, like I would eat. I've taken eat. two thousand calories before I got back. Well, on this the bike is why like, I, when I think about cycling, I just think that like, you see people like doing cycling and sitting on their laptop and stuff. And I just think it can't be that hard if you if if you do it like that. Again, maybe it's just it's all me. relative effort though, isn't it? Like, yeah. I can do turbo sessions and be like ridiculously like steady, and then sometimes like you'll do one and then it's turbo sessions. That's what's called. Cool. Disturb- yeah. Stabilizes as such, like yeah, yeah. the treadmill yeah, basically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you Fuck can do it. I feel like really I feel easy. Like a kid asking all these questions. I don't know anything. Nah, it's because you like learning. <laughs> 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 I'm just sitting <laughs> listening. <right? laughs> I'm like asking like, what's this? What's this? You can do it, like, but that's why you always used to see the. Like, <laughs> I was always cycling into the sea. <laughs> if you look on the map, they are made up places like New Zealand or somewhere. Um, but it's Bluetooth from a little wheel, which your wheel is then going around. So that's sense. then going onto your iPad yeah, yeah. to actually show you speed and everything. But you can make them hard, you can make them easy. Yeah, I suppose. It's yeah. like the difference between sitting on a bike and reading a book and sitting on an assault bike. Like, you can, yeah. like, one of them's hard, one of them is fine. Like. And I suppose. Really, it's probably more to do with the movement more than the actual output because you couldn't physically do that running just because of like you know, yeah, but you can, but you can listen, movement, but you, you know what I mean? You're you listen to an audio book, can't you? Yeah, so, yeah, like, yeah. So you do an intro, you and then carry on, yeah, go on, yeah, yeah, yeah. just like welcome to the realm, episode two. <laughs> I don't know, <laughs> done, 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 done. done. Here we go. three, two, one, <laughs> hashtag let's talk, <laughs> carry on. <laughs> We've already had about 10 minutes of just rambling, yeah. Man. And now you stopped. Yeah, it's funny, you should have been here like two hours ago. We sat here for like two hours talking about all sorts. We chatted before as well. <laughs> yeah. Talking well, about consciousness. We were talking about earlier. Yeah. We were talking earlier about like. Let's go into that. Yeah, yeah it's interesting. Yeah. We were saying about like. Um, we, we had different viewpoints, or I did really, I suppose, but like about whether there's life after death. A bit deep. I want to say, yeah, just because of the situation <laughs> with my dad. And that, ever since my dad died when I was 15. I looked deeper into that stuff and was like, yeah, there's something nice. Like, I think even with energies, like, I've had too many dreams and actually like been like woken up and there's been like lights at the end of my bed and it's happened in different places. Like, I'm like, well, some shit's too crazy to actually be just in my mind. Mm. Like something seems physical. And also even things like having different readings or like medium readings. Of, of uh, people, like, yeah, people, people want to think they're fake. When you go in there, like I had one, and it was a couple of years after my dad died. I went there with my mum, so people could potentially guess that's a young guy. He's with his mum. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's gonna be his dad. Mm-hmm. But there was one thing like there's a hole outside your bedroom, and I'd kicked a hole in the wall outside my bedroom, and then put like a cabinet, like a little cupboard up in front of it, so my mum didn't see it. <laughs> Something they can't possibly know. Yeah, they yeah, wouldn't yeah. know no about way, that. Yeah. My mum didn't even know about that beforehand. Mm. She's like, what was that all about? I was like, mm. there's a hole in the wall there. Um, You're like, I don't know. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, no idea. idea. <laughs> yeah. But like that sort of stuff happens and you think, like, like, no, it's fake, it's, too, yeah. 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 it's too fishy to have that. Like when people go to like, like clairvoyance, yeah. like you see it like um, around the table like on Only Fools and Horses when they're at the top yeah, of the yeah, pub. Yeah, yeah. Like that stuff is a bit too fake. But when you have certain shit happen and then also having like, I've had so many like Reiki sessions and I'm like, yeah, there's someone there protecting you. Um, and it's a male figure, that sort of thing. Or even like after my nan died, there's like this figure protecting you and like describing things which are actually too, too close to home. Yeah. So you get like, what's the app like I said about? The pattern app. Pattern. You can kind of like mold that into what's going on with your life. Like yeah. there's certain like, you fall for someone too quickly. Like, oh yeah, yeah that, that did just happen. You relate it. Yeah, yeah you relate it. Like with star signs and stuff like that, but then when other things happen like that, you're like, no, that's too on point. To I, I had my first one at just the end of last year as well. Went to an osteopath, and essentially, he did like did like a. We did a bit of body work for like five ten minutes, and after that went straight into like, he was like, 
like a few body things we can sort out for like five minutes and then after that he was like let's go into why you're really here and I was like oh fuck like, I didn't even say anything just went past the body stuff and then he got me into like a meditative state and did like a what you'd probably call like a healing session without actually calling it that um, hands on as well like physical touch and stuff like that and he spent about 15-20 minutes maybe or maybe half an hour maybe just in a deep meditative state and just went into a few things and stuff no real personal history was discussed no, nothing about my life this guy had only met me that day um, he only knew that I'd lived in New Zealand and he reverted back he asked me a few questions and he said um, he said in New Zealand did you spend did you spend uh, a, a night in the forest I was like yes like no no previous knowledge I haven't discussed anything there's nothing on social media I couldn't have found out at all and uh, he said did you have a, a magical did you just would you describe it as magical and, I, and that's a term I've always used about this one night I had I've always said it's been it was a magical night that's nuts. and he said that and he goes um, how you were that night is how you how you truly are and you need to reconnect with that part of yourself and I feel that I had an experience that night in New Zealand but I probably it's a great memory and I always have that reference but it's a state which I haven't reached since um, might be because it was a psychedelic, but but really that sort of Didn't mindset. Did take long to that to come yeah. up? Did it? <laughs> yeah. 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 But like that mindset and stuff, and that sort of perspective I had during that experience, it felt so true, and I haven't really reached that since. But the fact he plucked that memory out and linked it back to me was mad. And he is saying that he's essentially had psychic abilities which he suppressed for years and didn't didn't really um, didn't trust because obviously we're told that sort of stuff doesn't exist or it's wrong or it's fake or whatever. And that was the first one where I've had a direct example of it in my own experience rather than hearing it with other people when people bend it or people figure out based on the story and information they've given you to, to link it back to something. And that's the first one I had where I was like, yeah, this is direct experience yeah. for me now. I think when it happens to you or to someone close to you, mm. so, um, you know, Gemma from, she was a year above, me no my year year above you at school and um like we're really close friends and she done some distance roping with me the other day and she like said afterwards about bells what is reiki sorry like it's hard to it's like an energy i've like, heard yeah. energy healing yeah i've, I've heard, heard, it. heard it i actually said yesterday so i want to learn it and so how does that work from a distance so it's, it's not it's hands off it's most of the time work? anyway right so they'll come in and they'll feel your energy centers and literally like they'll almost transfer energy from, they, they won't transfer energy from them to you because it's all managing the energy isn't it but like they'll basically heal the energy where you need energy within you they'll pass that into you and channel it right I'm not sure you're to be though. honest um do you know what it's a hard one to describe i would yeah, i would i would be very open to it experience it experiencing it and it's interesting how you then how you were using your hands you yeah. were saying it's hands off but, but that's hand, hands on your, your aura your energy yeah, yeah i know yeah. And, and that makes sense i can i yeah. can buy into that yeah. but if i go distance if i go, like, if I go well, here i'm not physically touching you but you probably I sense you can yeah. feel you can feel you know, it, i mean I yeah. Yeah. Like this is where this, this is where, where all like, our viewpoints like a, a doll or something like I'll, she said she'll hold something yeah, and be able to like right, okay. so she can like feel this doll and she'll be like around your head and stuff Yeah, but uh, there was something she said about after she sent a voice note and I'd said to Laura about uh, did you hear those those bells uh, there was like weird church bells they didn't sound anything like the actual norms I live close to the cathedral and I realised yesterday there's three church bells that go off and they're not in sync they're like a minute between each other like ding 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 and then like Suddenly they'll go a minute and crazy, but she sent me the clip afterwards. I'm like, holy fuck, I heard that. Like, she, I couldn't hear it when she was doing it. She sent me a clip of this is what I'd done for like healing energy. Mm. I was feeling ridiculously anxious before, and then I was chilled. But like, that was just a weird thing. Like, you have to like feel like you said with your stuff. You have, if you feel you it yourself it and you experience that, like, what, what's the shame about this stuff as well? Because there are these real, real life examples. For every real life example, there's probably like fucking two thousand fake bullshit mm -hmm. ones of people trying to capitalize on this in like area of life. You know. Yeah, so and I think there's a lot of the things when we look at like the holistic stuff and like with me going into holistic health that there's a reason it's not on the NHS because it's not the paradigm, not some, same paradigm is yeah. it? Yeah. Um, it's not like fixing something or making someone live by giving them a medication and giving them a pill. Um, there's going to be like some impact is a placebo impact, but if we then get a similar result without giving them drugs, just by believing in something, 
is that not a better result? Yeah, yeah. sure. Yeah. Like, but you're not going to be able to make money or whatever it's like. Yeah. You can do Reiki on animals as well. Mm-hmm. And the thing that made me start believing it more because uh, was so Bally used to practice it. Yeah. Um, and she um, used to do it on Hank. And Hank's my, my dog. He's an absolute, like, just crazy. And she'd do it on Hank and he'd just go, Whoa. like, just straight away Change calm. Spate, yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. like it was like, he was like Buddha after it happened. <laughs> I was like, do that again. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. like, and then I started buying into it a bit more because I was a bit like, and I'm quite open to these things normally, but I don't know, there was something about it. I just didn't, I think I'd seen it happen a few times and I was like, you know what, yeah. I'm not sure about it. But after what I'd seen had happened to Hank, I was like much more receptive and then it was much more beneficial to me from that point, from like, like yeah, anything. Yeah. But seeing it happen to Hank, like, because he doesn't even know what it is, so that yeah, makes so it, he, that yeah, makes he can't even like, play. That he's like, 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 on double like, blind test. Yeah, like, yeah, like, he's, like, like, he's like, I've got a Reiki session booked today. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, not sure whether it's yeah. real or not. I'll see how it I'm open minded. Yeah, I've never had any experience like it, so I don't know. But for me, yeah, I don't know. It's the same. Yeah, I think my mind's weird because I, I'm, I have so much faith in all this stuff, like beyond what we can see and perceive and things like that. And life beyond like the five senses, but at the same time, I've got a very like dogmatic ego. It's really interesting. So it's like I've got this ego that's sort of like ah oh, bullshit, ah oh, bullshit. Every but I try, I keep seeking things out and trying stuff, but my mind's like ah oh, bullshit. I don't really believe in this. But then when you have those breakthrough moments where the ego is like what the fuck and it has no explanation for it, I think that's when you find those sort of sweet moments of like sort of direct experience, which proves stuff beyond your own sort of preconceived thoughts about reality. You know, is that even think- like what doing like sum ups and like summaries of the year? Like, and you see what you done last year that you didn't believe was even possible Burpees. the year before. <laughs> like, so, seriously, like, like 200 in, I'm thinking, fucking hell, like, I've got to do a thousand, I can't quit. Like, I'm looking around thinking everyone else feels like, oh, I don't know, no, everyone looks like it's hard, but I'm thinking, God, no one's going to quit, I can't quit. I thought, yeah, I was yeah. like, is anyone going to quit? I was yeah. like, I wonder if anyone's going to quit, because this is yeah. horrible. Like, you and look fine like, the whole time. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Tom just looks like Tom all the time. No matter what we do, you, Tom is just... Your face put some boxing gloves on me, I will not look graceful. Your yeah. face did not change, and you did look red in the face, but you were like 600 in. And I was like, mm. fucking hell, man. I'm very routine about things though, so if I say I'm going to do 10 on the minute every minute, Which that's all I tell right. myself. So then all I've got to do is 10 on the minute every minute. I never yeah. try to think of the big total. Yeah, yeah. So then I'm just, I'm just doing 10. Yeah. I'm just doing 10. I'm just doing 10. It's like I can always do 10. I'm like, in my head, I'm just checking, can you not do 10? I'm like, well, no, get down there and yeah. do 10. Yeah. That's literally, yeah. I yeah. got to five, I'm like, right, it's just that again. Five yeah. again, six. That's why I started three. doing fives, I did. Yeah. But I think that's why me and you are quite similar, because I'm. I'm very open and I also acknowledge that there's so much we don't know mm-hmm. beyond our senses mm-hmm. but also science does show us that look at quantum physics do you mm-hmm. know what I mean it, it literally shows us that but at the same time although I wouldn't call it my ego but my logical brain still goes like well that doesn't really make sense like, I still think I have to have some form of belief system I can't just go around going everything's real like witches are real, mm. Father Christmas is real, Reiki Healing's real. Like, I can't, I can't go around not putting them in the same bracket. But like, do you know, what I, mean? I can't just believe in everything. But at the same time, I am also very open to it. But for me, like, it's just things that that seem to have, like, for example, the power of the mind and like the manifestation, the visualization thing, right? Placebo, which I believe are the same thing, like. They're almost factual. They're just non-falsifiable. Not even non-falsifiable. You can't even prove. You can't like physically show the workings out of it. But yeah. like to to say that the medical, the big pharma, literally test for placebo effect when they have a new drug. Like all these things like that. You know, it is real. Like, our brain can do stuff, right? I get that. But then certain things like Reiki, and I'm like, where's the where's the realness behind it? Mm. Do you know what I mean? And and. If, the, if you have to believe in something for it to work, then I think that that could potentially be your brain manifesting that work. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So, like, you don't have to believe in gravity. Mm-hmm. Like, it's yeah. not like, oh, I don't believe in it, so I'm just going to float yeah. away. Yeah. Like, yeah. That's, that's just it. So, like, if, if this was, like, a thing, to me, I'd be like, it wouldn't matter whether you believe in it or not. It'd be really interesting if someone who really, really was adamant that Reiki is bullshit had a Reiki session and for it to work. But would you not, yeah. would you not think that for it to work, there has to be some belief as well? That's what I'm saying, yeah. Because so they I have imagine. to be open to actually sitting down yeah. and actually opening up their energy to actually, like, 
some people don't even believe they have an energy around them mm-hmm. and such. Yeah. Uh, well, I'd, I'd say and, most people. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah, and there was a time when I didn't believe that. Yeah, it's a load of bullshit, all the spiritual stuff. Mm-hmm. And when you say energy, it's got a bit deeper on like word. I know like terminology, we don't have the best linguistics yeah. to be able to describe they're like, stuff. They're but easy like, words to sort of like. like yeah. throw, they're easy words to throw around, but like, what do you actually mean? Like, try and describe. Like, yeah, what do you think it is? What does it mean? What does I feel it feel like? An outer like? shield, like around me, like around like. So, trying to again, explain how to put it into words it's oh, scientifically yeah. proven yeah, it's like, we all have an electromagnetic field around it it's yeah. factual yeah. Like, like, that's not a thing why does conjure give out energy which literally create energy field around us mm-hmm. but I guess it, I, for me like for things like that it's like when you can you know like when someone stands behind you you haven't heard them move you haven't done anything but you know they're there yeah, yeah, yeah. that is like feeling their energy, energy that, field, that yeah. is like they are close enough that your mm-hmm. energy fields are touching and you don't need to know and hear a noise you don't have to hear it for sure that is same as like you said earlier like this I can feel you know, oh, wait, 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 I'm gonna close my eyes and go, come near my face. I'll tell you when, it, when you're near my face. Alright, hold on. <laughs> oh no, because I'm gonna move, you can hear it. Oh, hold on. I'm gonna, get, I'm gonna have to get in a. Now. Yeah, see? That <laughs> won't even me, that's Tom. Is it? <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you what it is, it's like a, it's like a narrowing. It's yeah. like almost like your energy is being const- compressed like into you. Yeah. Makes sense. Weird. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, fully in, fully right. subscribed. Like to that. You've, yeah. had, you've had times. Oh, I've had times where I've dreamt about someone, said about it, and they've dreamt about me at the same time. Like a psychic. Oh. Yeah, like you yeah. in the dream together. Yeah. So when our cat, or our cat, Bally's cat, but like partly my cat, he died. I had a dream about him dying. I've never dreamed about him before in my life, ever. I had a dream that he died on the night that he had a heart attack. Like, I've forecasted things like that, that as well. Too like, much stuff has happened. What do you like, think that is? To me. Like like, what do you think that is? Mean, it's like what we talked about. I think it's like that collective consciousness, and you have your bubble of consciousness that you're tapped into. So then it's like my mum had a dream recently that Kaylee was pregnant. Like, you had met her mom, before, like, yeah, yeah like, yeah, but I'd met her and we were seeing each other, yeah. and like, and then that mum had a dream about that. Like, and she probably probably was at that point. I don't know if she was, but like, yeah. there's a collective consciousness when you have people within your little bubble. But I when, think you, sorry, go on. What I mean is, is like, I get the I've done a few burpees or something. Oh, man, <laughs> I get the collective. I get it, but like that's almost like predicting the future, isn't it? So you're preempting something. Like, so what do you think that is? But Are you preempting it, or is it happening at the same time? This it's like, it's like, it's like Louis, Louis, Louis having, having that segment bad vibe time. on that video earlier. That is exactly lined up. Like, yeah, there's no reason for that to like come up, but that that those things happen too regularly for there not to be a collective. Feeling or whatever. Well, you get a feeling of deja vu as well. Mm. You, so with deja dreams, vu is fascinating. Yeah. You know, I think we we, we went mm. in on like dreams a little bit when me, you, and Louis at, um, at my plot once, didn't yeah. we? Yeah. And I was saying that my kind of theory, and this is why I think like with me, my opinion, opinion, it's not opinion, but my views on these sorts of things are very fluid mm-hmm. because like I kind of think that dreams are like when we sleep, that's us tuning in to other realities. Mm-hmm. Like that's actually happening. No matter how fucking mental that may seem, like Another you know dimension. the whole multiverse theory, right? There's yeah. more universe out there than there are. Like it's infinite. Mm-hmm. Like anything you could possibly imagine mm-hmm. will happen. Mm-hmm. There'll be a place where you've got a polar bear head, and then there'll be a place where you've got a polar bear head, and there'll be a whole universe that works on those principles. So like, and I think a dream is us somehow, somehow hacking the kind of the hive mind, but also like. Ba-dum! onto a different dimension, do you know what I mean? And that's you, like, yeah, hacking these these different realities. That's where you need to watch that film. What film? The Soul film. Oh, right, okay. Because I I was trying to explain to someone how I feel when I really get into, like, the zone making music, and then suddenly you look at the watch and, like, two hours has gone. Mm. Uh, I feel like I'm still working on the same four-bar loop. Yeah. And just there, it's just, like, the mind wanders off into a different place. and Timeless. Yeah. And, and just like everything blurs around it, mm-hmm. and then his soul goes into a different place, which is a, it's hard to explain it, but he's in a complete different place, which is like into the void. Mm-hmm. And then there's other souls around there as well, and that's the only place he can communicate with these other people. Mm-hmm. Um, and then there's like lost souls in there, mm-hmm. and they're, they're in an ocean, like loop, like getting underwater. around the lost souls. Like, so hard to describe. Like, like, like the same we were saying earlier, like. How fucking crazy Disney are doing. They had it with um, Inside Out, 
where they're going into your brain and like, there's different ways of thinking Her- in there. Hercules as well. The under- yeah. Hades and the underworld and then Greek mythology and shit like yeah, that. Yeah, like how they explain that in a different yeah. way. But yeah. this one, like the soul, have anyone seen it? No, no. Yeah. Have you seen it, Luke? What's that, mate? Soul. Um, it's on Disney Plus. It's got Jamie Foxx in it. Graham Norton and like, like Richard. It it's been recommended, yeah. Richard yeah, so many. So, that's what I said earlier. So Ross put it in our little mm. dome chat, didn't mm-hmm. he? Mm-hmm. Two people messaged me on Instagram who just follow me, who don't, who I don't know, like yeah. just randomly speak to him once a fucking blue. They were like, you need to watch this film. Yeah. You know, like, yeah. Four or five times just come up. So, so I'm it like, means you got to do it, yeah. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's, it's definitely, like, I thought it was going to just be about music. And I was thinking, oh, that's crazy because I'm just doing piano lessons. And mm-hmm. like, now he's mm-hmm. like a jazz pianist and all this stuff. But then you just like, the meaning of it is crazy. Like, almost like to tears for some people that, haven't found their spark as such and then you're like well that is my spark but now what's next mm. and like, it, I won't go into it like deeper if people haven't seen it but like, it is what's next when you like, say what find is next your, after 100k find your what spark is, that reminds me of find your why yeah which is a very common thing Similar that people thing. go on about find your why me and Lou sat here this morning we had David Goggins on he's like People who go on about find your why, it's fucking bullshit, yeah. man. He's like, that means you got time. That means you got an easy life. That means you've got no fucking drive. He's like, coming on, he's like, coming in at us. <laughs> so, yeah, fair play. But, then, uh, but yeah. these things like, why, why do we do this stuff? Yeah. But it's like when you're in a sport and you're, it's like flow state, isn't it? Essentially, that's what you're in. You're that's, in your complete yeah, flow that, state. Yeah. And yeah. it's like when you're like in that ring and you can't think about anything else for that whole three minute round, all you're concentrating on is that one bit of energy. I devil's advocate. Go on. Is that escapism then? If you've got something to escape Possibly from. Possibly if you're escaping from, but like... Why, why do we like watching... I said earlier, I love watching films where it's not necessarily reality. I love superhero films because it's a different world. That's escaping from this world. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, you can just... like I like a big screen TV or cinema because I can get fully immersed in it. So like with, with um, like psychedelics, when... A few people before, like I remember Rach saying before, and a few people about being careful about not doing it too much and stuff. And I'm like, I think, it, I think so many things could be classed as escapism. Anything that distracts you from our matrix is classed as escapism. But actually, to me, like I see it as just exploring. Yeah. Like, I'm, not, I'm not trying to escape anything. Like, yeah, we, we've together. had a great, like we, we say this, we've we had, a, say we've had quite a great easy life. life. Like I've easy. had an easy life. I've been very fortunate. Got good fat. Like, everything's good, right? I've not had hardships and stuff. So, yeah, so to me, I'm not escaping anything. I'm not trying to face trauma. I'm not depressed. It's just, I'm just curious, man. Going out on your boat. Yeah, the ocean. and that's all it is. And similarly, that's the same thing, isn't it? You're not, we call it escapism, but like, yeah, maybe that is what, just what getting away. What happens when escapism merges into it? Because I remember, like, I like video games, but if I'm more stressed, I want to play more for escapism. Mm. But there were times when, like, I remember growing up, like, Love and Pro Evo, and like, couldn't get beat on it or whatever, whatever it was, Pro Evo or FIFA. Then you're watching TV and an actual football match on TV, and like, just press triangle, through ball, through ball. <laughs> what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> and it just blows over, like, yeah. yeah. Or like, Watching Assassin's Creed or playing Assassin's Creed, and then you're oh, like, I wish I could just chop you. someone's head straight off. <laughs> yeah. It gets a bit dark and, and dangerous yeah. then. So, yeah. but what point does escapism actually cross over? And when people but you can always say, say the whole of life is escapism. Yeah, yeah. This we're is not living saying. naturally anymore. Like, essentially, all we need to do is f- eat, feed, and create. That's yeah. all we need to do. Like at some point, we need to have a baby, feed ourselves, and survive. That's all we need to do. So everything we've constructed around that is escapism. Yeah. But then, is it not? Is that is everything we've created is not is that not what we're just trying to escape rather than that being? The I think we're also so very then, much trying to escape discomfort now though. So we've gone beyond like there was a point where building a solid house made sense because you had more chance of surviving. But now it's like I need a twenty five bedroom house with we're fifteen long yeah, suites. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. you're now avoiding discomfort because it's it's annoying to have to walk two doors so down to go to the toilet for sure. Yeah. And on I like have you heard Joe Rogan? He says about and this this like flip something for me but he said when he gets high when he gets stoned he likes the paranoia yeah. space yeah. yeah and and that now if i smoke i really sit with it now and i like but he says he says fucking right we should be paranoid because how we live is not fucking normal like this is not normal like do you know what i mean yeah. it's common like yeah. it's yeah this is not normal so it's right for you to be paranoid as shit because this is all fucking weird like we're, we're like, this is all mad like do you know what I mean? I can't remember who talks about the micro stresses you get each day. It's like 
wake up, first thing you get scared shitless in the morning because this mm. loud noise goes off. So it's your first rang, micro Dr. stress. Rang a strategy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like and it's amazing. And like next micro stress, stress it's like you're you're running late for work. Then you have to get run yeah. to get the bus. Stress. Then your emails Someone start coming through. Yeah. Your messages yeah, yeah, coming yeah. through. Like all of these stresses, like none of them are real. Like they're all imagined stresses. Yeah. Like yeah. we have put them on ourselves for n- no particular reason and agreed to them. Like. Again, yeah, we all just buy into it. We all, we all in, agree like, it, don't we? It's like, okay, yeah, well, I'll buy into that. We I'll look at something as normal based on the amount of people doing it. Like, yeah. I have the thing about people waking during the night. It's common as fuck, but I don't mean it's normal. Our body should be able to sleep seven, eight hours like, without waking for a piss. But we're in such a stressed state, poor blood glucose management, that after two, three, four hours, we wake up. But it's so common that people just don't even, oh, I just need the toilet. Yeah, a quote for like, that. How is it actually yeah. impacting our health? Like, yeah. all that stuff, like... Certain things have it's just become normal to like or common to normal be doesn't, in, yeah, yeah common doesn't it's, mean it's, it's become right. common to be Wear a mask. sick go yeah like and to go to the doctors all the time all this stuff has become common but is it normal to have to go to a doctor to improve your health yeah when normal should be our body is improving our health anyway suboptimum is normal yeah. for everyone that's what the, that's what everyone is like no one hardly anyone thrives nowadays like physically mentally. Like say, people sleep. don't know what it's like, like to feel good yeah, yeah. so like when you take them off certain foods which are triggering inflammation and they start feeling good then they're like oh, I didn't know what this feeling yeah. was like well, my brain and they have it and like oh that would make me feel like that they just don't know what that like addiction to feeling yeah. half decent is yeah. like but I think like that feeling good as well like it's exactly what you're saying because it's so abnormal it's like this must be a placebo, or this must not be normal, or the, do you know what I mean? It's like, yeah. the, or you, this won't last, yeah. or like. And then we get told we're stupid for not eating this and not eating that. We're not stupid, like. I know what you mean. Yeah, yeah. You're you're obsessed. I I love yeah. the quote. You tell me this. You know what I'm gonna say, yeah. don't you? Yeah. What is go on? The the, the all so my all life, my life, my like everyone was telling me to eat vegetables. Now all I do is eat vegetables, and they're all concerned about my health. <laughs> <laughs> like the, the veganism fit but about veganism it's essentially like we most of us have probably come from like a health angle maybe a little bit of sustainability and then it normally cements with the ethical side like that's what probably keeps you there but how I think for most of us that's got us there probably isn't the ethical side that was the thing that no. jumped out at me that's the last like, thing it's the 100% me. reason that I'll never do it, eat meat again but that wasn't what got me there. I was like, oh, you know what? I'm like the guy like turning off light switches. I don't use plastic. I'm like moaning at people at work about recycling. I'm like, oh, this is this massive thing I can do for the environment. Oh, I should probably do it. Like that's what got me there. And then I thought, like, oh, I feel loads better. I recover quicker. But then like the ethical side holds you there. But it's like the weirdest thing. It's like, that's an extreme view. I'm doing something which is probably the best thing I've ever done for my health. And it everyone sense. thinks it's extreme. And, like, it, and it makes sense. Like, oh, why don't you just be vegetarian? I'm like, well, because that's still got a lot of things in that I don't think, like, from my research, I'm not saying it's 100% right, but from my research, that doesn't sound like it's good for me. So, so I'm like, well, you're, well. you're, yeah. you're not allowed to do your own research. No, oh, you're no. Not, I believe no, the, <laughs> even with things like with not eating gluten. Like, I know that if I'm in a stressed state and eat gluten, migraine is going to happen. Like, it, it's, and, it, but it's knowing yourself me. as but well. People say, oh, you're just so obsessed by cutting gluten out every time. Uh, yeah, because I don't want to feel like that. That's exactly. Yeah. It's you're okay. Still, you're still obsessed with not doing heroin. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and it's like, this, it's like drink, giving up alcohol because like my whole life has been, my whole like career, everything has been built around uh, relationships, built around beers. And now I don't drink. All my mates are like, like panicking. They're like, "What are you going to do? Like, are you okay? Like, what's going on?" I'm like, "I've just made a really healthy life step. I did not have a necessarily that healthy relationship with alcohol because I'm because yeah. I'm a switch." We've talked about switches. I don't know. Yeah, like so, everyone either being a knob or a switch. So switches are on or off. So you're either in. Yeah. I might have one beer. I am going to be out till six a.m. Like there's n- there's never. I've it's never gone for one beer at the yeah. What's the point? Like yeah. yeah, and and then like knobs are like they can moderate themselves. So like they'll 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 be the actual guy going for one beer and going back to their like family. Yeah, what a knob. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but because I know that, therefore I can't really have a healthy relationship with alcohol because if I have one beer, I'll be like right. Where are we going? Like so, therefore, if I want to achieve the health goal, health goals I want, I know I can't do that. But then, because society is so normal in society, they're then scared of why I'm not doing it. My dad's like, oh, I can't we just go for one bit, and now he doesn't drink. I'm like, yeah, like, there we go. Yeah, but it's like it's weird how you get these reactions to these extreme views, which are actually the best thing you can do for yourself. Yeah, I still find it so so funny, and I don't know when in my life I will like make not make peace, but like understand this is that you can have such a huge reaction to just not drinking, right? Like I, the last time I got drunk was about four years ago, ran Rowan's, right? 
Um, and before that was probably about another four years before that. Right? I don't really drink because I don't see the point and blah, blah, blah. Right? But you can get a huge reaction from that. But if you, but equally, if you do mushrooms once, you can get a huge reaction from that. But they're, they're just stuff. It's all just because these fucking certain white men, I think arguably, made these rules years ago. Long time like, ago. A yeah. long time ago that this is okay and this isn't. But Opinions. Yeah. I just find Cause, that cause so they, strange. Because essentially they like one of them, they don't like the other yeah, one. That's just, it. <laughs> the fact that this guy had an opinion and it's so strong, it's just bled down for these g- centuries. And to made, know, made it's a, it's a common opinion now. But yeah. I, I, like, I get it with some things. Like I can get why like crystal meth is illegal. Like I think that's I think yeah. we could probably all agree that's not yeah. a good yeah, one. Have you tried it though? <laughs> 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 Mate, I did like, try it once. Really? I tried it in Australia once. Yeah. Oh wow. Um, well, you know, like half of Nazi Germany was off their tits on Christmas. Yeah, like yeah. that's literally how but, they. they but do you know what? Well, I think the impact fruit. on other people. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Third, that's that scale, person. isn't it? Like, but also, I think natural. So, like cocaine. Have you seen how they make cocaine? The chemical side. Yeah, they like dose it in petrol, and then all these other chemicals, and then do all this thing, and I'm like, that's not fucking natural. Where if I can pick a mushroom in the woods, I think I should be but allowed. Then, I think I should how be allowed they to make heroin. Yeah. I don't know how they make it, but it's from fucking. Okay, because it's games natural. on a plant as well, like essentially it comes yeah, from Yeah, I know, that's what I mean, but I, but I didn't want to, I don't want to say that and then actually someone turns around and goes, actually heroin is to just pick it and do it. I'm like, okay, maybe not all natural stuff, but like... But again, it's the, natural, it's the impact, on, natural, it's the impact on society, natural. like that's where it comes into it, isn't it? Like, yeah. well, alcohol, yeah. we have to, we have to do a process to get to the alcohol, I mean, you could just eat like a moldy apple, I guess, eventually, but like, yeah. there is a process to make it, but it's the fact that like, that has a huge impact on society, so it bothers me because like there's such a big impact on society with that, but yet it's completely yeah. ignored. Yeah. And yet I can do something that will impact me for six hours and no one else, and that's illegal. I don't. I and do make not understand. Per- I make me a better person. What's that study? It made me give up alcohol. It made me the first time I've ever had any solitude in my whole life was after the first trip on mushrooms. Like that's like completely life changing. Like yeah. alcohol was life changing. That's like next level life changing. I can be on my own for the first time in twenty eight years i could yeah. be on my own like but what, what uh, we yeah, say about like the alcohol thing there was um speaking to a client when she signed up she said the first thing she said is like oh, i can't cut out alcohol i said well, if you can't cut out alcohol or you won't cut out alcohol they're two different things won't cut out yeah, strong it's words. pretty much okay mm. can't cut out is you're addicted like you're chemically addicted to that and i think that's where we need to like differentiate with that stuff like when you look at the addiction to that thing because of the state that they're in the escapism yeah, like is alcohol not the same as video games? Is the same as porn? Is the same as all these other things? So is, is alcohol yeah. is alcohol chemically, chemically, more addictive than other things, or is it just because it's so like, available? Yeah, like for example, if mushrooms were, you went to the supermarket or your news agents on the corner and they had all these different varieties, would they be just as addictive, or is alcohol actually addictive? I believe that it's it's not necessarily. It's the same thing when we look at steroids. When we look at past use of steroids, like with myself, like the actual addiction of using steroids, there wasn't any addiction. But that feeling there of feeling fucking unstoppable was pretty addictive. So if you look at alcohol, if you're using it, yeah, it's a powerful thing. If you're using alcohol to numb something out, and that's helping you numb it out, Mm. then it's going to be addiction to that feeling. But how can you actually have a scientific study to say it's addictive? But yeah. you are like that is like, like we said we've had easy life so I was never trying to numb anything I was just yeah. chasing that good feeling that's yeah. all I was ever and doing like, like, yeah. Yeah. the people you're around experience. you were chasing that feeling as well yeah exactly so and it's so normal like, yeah. and when you don't go for a beer and you go you go to the pub with like work and everyone else is drinking and you sit there and you're you're not in the same place as them like you can have like a chat with them but when they're all like it's so annoying like, when they just start getting pissed like, you, about four yeah. beers that's the limit yeah. like at four beers you have to go home because you can't hang out with them anymore because you're on such different levels, but then, and you don't want to be there because you're probably going to detract from them as well. Like they're having this like amazing time, and you'll be like, I don't know, talking about this stuff. <laughs> like, <laughs> <laughs> there in the yeah, like, but it's a, it's a weird one because it's so normalised in society that it's not a, it's not a fair one. To I don't it. think I'll drink anymore. I won't because I know what I've achieved since. Not. I was saying this this to my mate yesterday that he said he's just started drinking after like it was like the AJ Klitschko fight. I remember picking him up from the city and he was pissed out of his head. We went back to his and there was like five or six of us. We got a Chinese and he went upstairs and just passed out on the bed. Missed the fight, we ate his Chinese, all that sort of <laughs> stuff. Um, and he's not really drunk until recently. Now he just drink occasionally. 
but it took like that like thing happening his missus having a moan at him like proper moan at him about it to then change instantly like that and some things like we need to go to an extreme of something so, like we're, we're seeing reality. someone like go to the extreme in, in some of our meetings of Rosa society go to extreme of drugs of like nearly losing his kids and stuff yeah and his relationship to actually then cut things out but even then it's still hard to because you get that addictive side of it yeah so at like, what point does like I think we've talked a lot of very side about rock bottom isn't it that's yeah. when that's when your like overall side will then kick in but some, some, you do have to get there sometimes a lot of the you time. think you've hit rock bottom when you haven't right? yeah so and then, then you start moving forward and then suddenly you get pulled back in yeah it's a tricky one I think everybody's addicted to what takes the pain away and I think there's yeah. a guy called Gabor Mate who's a Canadian physician and he's he's he studied or he worked with like heroin addicts and stuff in Canada and stuff and he's wrote loads of books on it and he like ties in like spirituality psychology and things like that and like sociology and stuff and just he's like the expert on addiction and it's essentially like once you're addicted to, to something especially like drugs you're kind of fucked you need so much help because it's not just your will and your consciousness anymore it's like your body's against you your biology's against yeah. you your brain is against you I mean it's like you can want to get off it but it's so hard when, once you're in that cycle and I think because life can be so tragic for so many people like we're obviously in this room right now we're all very fortunate compared to billions of people there's no there's no surprise people get addicted to shit because it does just numb out and make their experience a little bit less uh, a little bit more tolerable so like yeah, when you hear about it, and I think it is a shame when in our society when you look at it, when you look at alcohol and how much it's promoted and how easily readily available it is because it's just like so destructive. And like for example, your story alone with mushrooms is so profound and so like life changing. It's so crazy how people can't just take a look at the way things are and have a little bit of a reframe about it. But we're so dogmatic and so uh, quick to judge and. Um, sort of stigmatised stuff especially unknown I think a lot of people that make up these rules and people who put legislation in and rule, laws and stuff I think a lot of them it is their own personal sort of like fear of the unknown do you know what I mean like these yeah. sort of people like um, Graham Hancock says doesn't he like if all the world leaders were to go through 12 ayahuasca ceremonies before mm-hmm. they could before they can do anything it, it, the world would be completely different did you say like, they wouldn't the want to be world leaders yeah have you seen the law like, like the history of the laws of marijuana yeah hemp originally was uh, well, it's, all, it's all just racism it's all it? because like the South Americans came up to North America and it was predominantly those and uh, black people who mm. smoke weed so they just went we don't really want to associate with them so if we make weed illegal and that's all it was. Like tactical, and that isn't fear, it? It's like they said the fear of the unknown, and that is different. But it, I, it's just such a shame. I think that, like you then said, that it's just all like everyone puts so much trust into people to run our country and tell us what's best. But yet, when you stand back objectively and look at everything as a whole, you're that's, like, that's well, the key, isn't it? well, why? Why is that? How is that good from mm. any smoking? Yeah. Like, prime, prime example like, how is alcohol I kind any, of get because there's a social benefit to it it should be available yeah, yeah, dose it dependent. should be available yeah, but be not, yeah. you shouldn't go into your news agents and half of it is filled with wine yeah do you know what I mean yeah, yeah. 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 and that, the cheapest possible vodka you well, can well, find yeah. let me look at things like mushrooms and stuff like that because are there studies to show like the effect on like your big and hippocampus like Things that will convert long to short, uh, short to long term memory. They are studying it now. Fear. Yeah. Because yeah. with alcohol, there are studies to show how bad it is, and yeah. it's still being. Why don't we just make up a study? <laughs> it's the right time. No, but they are because yeah. so yeah. like, it's like they're coming at it from a very medicinal angle now. So, so alcohol can promote fear. So if there's studies that show that it can promote fear, and it's still so readily available, it's a business. Yeah. It's fear, yeah. violence, like everything, like everything that's bad. Yeah. Comes. I should imagine there's that list of drugs in there against like what's most harmful to you and others. That was the one I shared on the podcast. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, and like that, like alcohol must be up there. I mean, alcohol no, was like one of the top ones. Must be one and of the like, top two. Psychedelics, top one. One no, of the psychedelics will be at the oh, lowest. Yeah. It will have the least harmful effect on you and the least harmful effect on anyone else. Like, yeah, no one, like no one, you know, it's like safe. Talking about the addiction side as well, like what you said earlier, like. Um, Johan Hari, mm-hmm, um, yeah. he did like that. He wrote the book, another, uh, his second book was on addiction, wasn't it? Or his first, or more uh, recent book. Yeah. But um, he did this, he noticed that 
like drug addiction is also can also be like completely situational so like when everyone was in like all the american soldiers in the vietnam war a lot of them had opium but like, mm-hmm. like addiction like you would in a war like they all came back none, none of them brought it back like not a single one of them ever so, so, tried to get um opium when they got home mm-hmm. so it was just completely just to the situation so it's like hence why that could be like a useful treatment and so well, why rehab can work and then in rehab everyone rehabilitates and they go back to their old situation and it goes straight back in yeah. but it's like yeah so many environmental factors isn't there Definitely. Yeah, they, they were the having war. the opium because of the war <laughs> yeah. if you take the war away they don't need the opium yeah, yeah. they were using it for the COVID first situation gotta go to war yeah. though bro yeah <laughs> <laughs> gotta have war right yeah. <laughs> Well, haven't we it may just not be physical, but isn't there a psychological one going on at the haven't, moment? Haven't mm. we just signed a sixteen billion dollar, sixteen billion pound four we? year contract for to fund military? Yeah, as the UK, so we're we're underfund for the NHS, but we've got sixteen Bs to to pump into our military. What sector. was that Brian Defense. Rose one that he, he shared about like underfunding? Right. Defend from who, man? Yeah. Brian Rose shared some something about underfunding the NHS, but someone spent like fifteen million on fireworks for New Year's. Sadiq. Probably, oh, probably yeah, so yeah, yeah. 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 Brian Rose that shared there along there. Yeah. It's like crossed out NHS and then put New Year's fireworks. But yeah, talking about things that don't make sense and is that really about health and things like that? It's like we look at the effect the lockdowns have had on society. It's like crippling, isn't it? Do you know what I mean? It's like, and and like the overall, make... we don't know they don't actually care about our health because they ban all the things that are really bad for our health. So yeah. why is this? I don't understand. That's one of the things I struggle with most. Why is this the one thing? I think it's because of the perceived, like, to ban cigarettes would basically be bad for the vote, wouldn't it? Probably overall. I don't know how you many people still you smoke. You wouldn't get into Parliament if you said you're going to ban cigarettes. You're going to ban for the financial stability of the country. Yeah, like, that, but then, but then, but, a, but then so is this. Like, oh, this yeah, is this really kind of bad for the financial like, stability. Before that, like, yeah. ban, ban it would Where be like, you do that, if like, you kind of said, if you say, right, we're going to leave the country. save the NHS as well. If you're going to leave the country open now, like, and say, right, we're not going to do anything, like, it might affect some old people that is really bad for the vote because you're basically saying I don't care about old people. Mm-hmm. So then like, I feel like that's why they had to act on this. And it's more political, it's more than, political than it is they actually care. Because if they actually cared, 100%. alcohol of strong, like, allow beers, okay? But you can only buy four. Like, ban cigarettes. Like, Who ban, needs a four like, five you, you can't buy multiple packets of paracetamol at once. Like, you can go in different places. You can't buy hairspray and a packet of crisps together because <laughs> people have done that apparently. Like, <laughs> like, like, like apparently if you literally go to a super like this is part of my training at Sainsbury's like years and years ago if people come and just buy hair pay, hairspray and packet of crisp don't sell it to them I was like what if they're doing their hair and yeah. they're fancy they're 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 they just fancy claim but, as my curly hair yeah. but they're allowed to buy if they want to buy gallons of vodka, vodka yeah and, <laughs> they added a lighter to it it'd be different yeah or, or cutlery this yeah. is like going back to where you just said like making sense right I saw a thing earlier and it was like the queues in the airport. So you're in the airport and you've got to stand from here to that doorway, right? Airplane. And then you're in the airplane 20 minutes later. Oh. But it doesn't spread on airplanes. Like, it just doesn't make sense, does it? Like, recycled air. So much it doesn't make sense. When you look yeah. at it objectively, it's so ironic. That, that's too the much. only it's thing. Not even, it's too that, much it don't That's make all sense. I've said all along. So my mum, <laughs> she, she was at work the other day and this, this woman was like, oh my God, these conspiracy theories, blah, blah, blah. And my mum was like, oh yeah, my son, he's one of them. <laughs> <laughs> Jim, I was like, no, mum, I'm not one of them. I was like, all I'm saying is none of it makes fucking yeah. sense. Like, that's what I'm saying. I, I don't necessarily I, think the government has a big agenda behind no, it. I just agreed. think it doesn't make sense. I don't, I'm not there thinking they're trying to control us. They're trying to, I think they're trying to do the best they can, but they just doesn't make sense yeah i I, I agree i don't think there's a new world order really i don't think there's an agenda i think it was a big fuck up but i think it's political so no one can come out and go sorry guys i'll be honest this is nowhere near as bad as we thought we've wasted some money but we wanted to be safe they will get the vote yeah but like that's 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 what should happen yeah yeah Yeah. Yeah. it just doesn't make sense all these things like i say the nhs being underfunded all these things like or like not reducing the things that are making us unhealthy, not allowing people to go to the gym, not allowing people to run outside in the park. Like even when the statistics yeah, show, yeah, I went to run through yeah. Castle yeah. Mount Gardens yesterday, and they're shut. The gardens of Castle Mount are shut. Fuck. Fuck's sake, you've got to run up the hill now. Like, just look at the numbers and go. And it's like, the numbers they're putting out. You can't, go hill, you can't go hill walking. You literally see some days, particularly this time of year, you will see no one. You're not allowed. But I drove like, past a full church today. Oh, uh, because. Another good thing that I found hilarious, and to be fair, I didn't think she would be. My mum was like, yeah, no, fair. So she was saying that everyone's in uproar about, well, you can't lock down Christmas. 
as if that's anything, right? And like, I, was, I found it hilarious that that's even like a sentence. Like, I can't imagine like he can't lock down Christmas. Like I just don't yeah. get it, right? But then, what about all the other religions? Yep. And no one's actually Christian, are they? Really? No, you celebrate Christmas. But all the other religions... Most people aren't Christian. We're, we're commercially... We're, we're, nine percent yeah. of we're like commercially people. Christian, as in we'll give each other presents and put a tree up, but that's it. And that's it. Yeah. No one knows anything about it. No yeah. one's Christian. Re- commercially Christian. But yeah, what about the other religions? Like, oh, yeah. You'd be going, well, hold on, you can't let people out Christmas Day, but what about when we had this our... That's why I say we should PRD. go Druids, because Druids have got loads of holidays, so we can get loads out. <laughs> <laughs> holidays, holidays, holidays. Holidays don't work when you're self-employed, though. No. <laughs> That's the trouble. They do when you're it's, it's the funny thing. All these all the <laughs> Everyone's being, everyone, like, Wait all these things, <laughs> about, like, learning an instrument, doing that, and all these things. I've just been working as normal. So, like, I, ha- I don't feel I've, like, I wouldn't say personally developed, but it's not like I've picked up a new skill or, like, done anything. Like, imagine if you, imagine now if you went, you got six months off, there, mate. Like, whilst getting paid. Yeah, whilst getting paid. What you'd do. Or it was getting paid 80%. What I did. Yeah, Tom. Yeah. <laughs> Prime example. What would you Look do? Ideal yeah. Tom now stands here, the ideal man. <laughs> <laughs> so you need. <laughs> oh man, we just need a lockdown. <laughs> yeah. Maybe lockdowns are good then. Yeah, but what about if there's a lockdown and everyone just come out? I think lockdowns are allow people to put things into perspective. Personally, yeah. it was an amazing experience. Like, I, if someone said you could have a lockdown again last year, I would take it every time. Do you? Had... Does anyone know anyone directly? Not like sisters, boyfriends, sisters, whatever who's had a very, very negative experience of this whole year? Last year. Last year, yeah. Oh, shit, it's New Year now. Yeah. Because I was saying the other day, no one that I know of has had a very, very bad like lost year. job, like no family one. breakup, all that Albeit, stuff. Albeit, I'm in construction, and that's probably I think, a lot yeah, of like when, I know. When we judge things financially, like we had that discussion about the impact financial has had on my business. That's been a bad year. But what I've learned growth-wise about myself no, it hasn't. It's been a good year because I'm a much stronger and more resilient person than I was yeah. this time last money, year. Money is just, money's just code. Money's a currency. But like, yeah, yeah, in themselves, like you're not coming out of the year going manically depressed or losing a hope. Do you know what I mean? It's like, close to it. Where? However, there must be fans. Not, not manically, man. I, yeah. I, 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 I know. That we just don't I know. think we 100%. all live in quite a little bubble as well and we don't have that much like like there's not like we're all re- relatively affluent like we're all really yeah, yeah, good yeah, yeah. I know of yeah. so people that I, committed suicide in the bodybuilding world right so and, and I know like with that I don't know them close enough to know what else they were going on like was going on in their lives then but I know that such a big part was going to the gym that'll be the, was it the that'll only be thing the, but is it the broke the back yeah, yeah, that'll yeah, be what yeah, it was yeah. Yeah. so there was and it was quite in the first like two three months I couldn't remember the whole expression so I just said broke yeah. the back but straw, you know what I mean straw, straw break the camel's back camel's back, yeah. back yeah. was that I, I usually say <laughs> things like <laughs> that you know what I mean yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> we did. Oh, we were there. Yeah, yeah. Oh, you could have just got away with that. I, I, know, say I, know, I know. I thought I'd say it. But like, th- th- there is there are people that have been like have lost their lives through the lockdown, not through a virus. Yeah. And yeah. could they have still been here? And there will be a lot more going forward. Yes. Yeah. That like the, the full financial worse. impact. Because so most people have been paid like something the whole way through. If you're employed, you've been given something. Businesses have got bounce back going. So so far, there's been support. It'll be the bit after all that stops when the that really there's only so that much you can support people based on 80% of their income from like whatever it was. I think for me, right, and I said this to my mum, I was like, I said this about six, seven months ago, I was like, for me, this just shows who really has control of all of us, mm-hmm. the banks. Simple mm-hmm. as that, right? All this pandemic, most of it, all these people, like, there was this pub in Norfolk who done like pasta for a penny which meant that was a substantial meal, which yeah, meant you could have a those, drink, right? Mm, All yeah. these things, people are finding loopholes for their businesses and stuff. They don't give it, they, because they don't care about the virus, they care about businesses, their business, money, right? Why? Because they have to, because they'll have rent to pay, they'll have things to pay, right? Mm. Same as like, but really, what they could have just done was went, do you know what, for the next six months, finance industry, no interest payments, nothing, just pause. Don't get me wrong, I'd love to be like Guy Fawkes, let's take the whole system down. But like, no, let's not take, just pause it. No one's going to lose out. I'm not saying take any of your billions, just pause it. And give everyone the rest to go, you haven't got to worry about that, so you can just stay at home. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And, and like, they don't have that power. 
But isn't it like how, what's the percentage of billion, billionaires? Have got, is it twenty seven percent richer during this period? Yeah, yeah. So it's yes. like I think any situation. So billionaires like have got twenty seven percent richer. So the wealth, it's, just a, it's just been a wealth shift. What's the increase in suicide rates? Yeah, I'm sure it's like twenty seven percent higher. But again, like we're we're That's saying about different things. figures that we've seen about these, but how do we know about all these other figures? But like we, we don't. Yeah. Like, yeah, like yeah. I, I heard somewhere that Jeff Bezos or Bezos, whatever, he could we'll hard, just give. Give uh, Je- or Jeffrey, he could give half his wealth away and still be as rich as he was at the start of this pandemic epidemic. Because remember, that got downgraded seventeen you know, March. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> to, to, uh, to, uh, yeah, interest. What was. was it the other week on that video? So oh, Jeff that, Bezos. Uh, so Jeff Bezos could earn what was it eight thousand dollars an hour since since the birth of Christ, and he still and wouldn't he's, have as much. He's still. I think it was a minute. I think it was a minute. A minute. Eight thousand dollars a minute from the birth of Christ. Up until now, and he still wouldn't have the same amount of money he's got now. But is it actually money he's got, or is it his net worth? What you mean, cash? The, in the value, bank? yeah. yeah. The value think, I don't of think his he's. Company. I don't think he's doing that bad at either. To well, I know that. Yeah, but like, <laughs> I, say, I should imagine that. Oh, he's he's only got. Is his yeah, yeah, yeah. net worth? That's yeah. what these things are talking about. So yeah, when you Google something like yeah, David net Beckham's net worth or whatever it is, and you're like. No, that's crazy. Then what does that really mean? Like, it's it's like, like the value mean, of all their assets. No one, so then it's the same thing. But really. also, but then no one could afford to buy Amazon, so he can't, he yeah, can't so sell Amazon, it tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah. How's he going to need that amount yeah. of money? Like, yeah. to buy stuff off Amazon? Yeah. Like, like, this is where I just think, like, what's the point, man? Like, who needs that much money? What's the point? And this is where the. It's a shame what because, could be done with that money. Yeah. That's the, yeah. the shame, because there's not. But there is, there is always money, but there's also, like, there's not a limited amount of money. There's money being created all the time, literally, right now in this world. Yeah. But, like, that big proportion, it would be nicer if that was spread thinner because there's lots of people in the, mo- the world that earn less than a dollar a day. Like, And, and yeah. the problem is, is that, like, albeit we, we, we try and do it, but the rich buy, they don't spend their money. It's, it's kept in at its shares. Yeah. It's this, it's that. It's not like a it's lot not, of the rich, not all the rich. Yeah, okay. it's not like they go out and spend money and buy stuff. So if we make money, usually us normal poor people will go. I say poor, but like you know what I mean. We'll go out and spend money when we earn it, where they don't. So that's why there's such a huge. And if they do, it will be to their friend. Yeah, like, inequality like, yeah, like, of, of wealth. Where actually, I think like I watched a thing before, and it was like in the sixties, seventies, so seventies, just before like. Real capitalism really kicked off. There was like a thing to do with like wages, and actually, the more wages the most people have, the richer the rich get. So it's almost like a disservice to them to not make sure everyone else has more money because we'll spend it, yeah. and then they'll make then even more. Yeah. Like, yeah. Do you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. Um, I mean, it's like there's a quote in it. It's like if you give like a million dollars to a person, they'll end up having the same amount of money like in a year. Weeks, in yeah. in like a year That's time, um. So. Who who says that? Who says that? There's a there's a like an economist, and he basically says if you took all the money in the world and distributed it evenly between every single yeah, person, it ended up, that'd end up in, exactly the same. Yeah, yeah, back in the hands of the same. But there's, there's the growth, exactly the growth same. mindset of people. Well, it makes sense because people know the systems. People are more financially intelligent and things like that. Well, none of us are educated on finance. Like none of like the the middle and working class do not know how to work. No one's ever taught us how to do with money. Like no, no one's ever knows. said, oh, you should invest in that. Oh, yeah. don't, don't like, save. To Basically, you're told to save, but you're not told to save smartly. You're put told it, to save Put it in your ISA. Put yeah, it in your ISA and buy a house. house. Yeah, like, yeah. And then that sustains the system. Yeah. 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 What, 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 we put it in a house, which actually what, 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 isn't... Uh, we're, we're, mm. I think we're convinced, we've been tricked into thinking a house is like our asset and all that. It's not, you pay that each month. You're indebted to the bank for 30 years. You literally get the biggest loan of your life which is, like if I said I was going to put five grand on my credit card, my mum would hit the roof. If I'm going to go and take 200,000 pounds out from the bank Fine. in a mortgage, if I just put the word mortgage behind it, oh, what's the or, good idea? Or if you had a 50,000 pound yeah. so, um, student debt, that's okay. Yeah. 30, well, if you had 50 grand about, to start a business. You yeah. argue about assets isn't like the biggest asset we've got our body. Oh, oh, here we house. go. Yeah. That's Depends. going to get us through life. Our time. Our time Depends. is our biggest asset. What about if you, what about if you had an... Um, if you if you didn't work, how would you survive? I know about two a, berries you can eat in summer. Why, why would I not be have, working? <laughs> is it because my body isn't been given the respect, so I'm not I'm too sick to work? But you can't live for free anymore, so you can't you can't yeah, exist can't unless you earn money. money. As, like, if I earn fifty grand next week, I can't go. I'm not going to spend fifty grand on myself, and then not have anywhere to live or eat. If you spent it on yourself, which allowed you to be more productive, to earn more. Are you trying to pitch it to us? 
Oh, you could do. If you sure. got 50 grand to give me, uh, <laughs> I don't mind. I think there's a, there's a poor proportion that you have to invest in yourself, but you couldn't invest everything. Because like, at the end of the day, if the better you get, the better everything that you do will be, your work, your relationships, everything like that. But yeah. you also have to have a roof, you have to have food, and you have to yeah. have like water. But that's like, why I'm switching more of a thinking to grow my business this year, is that I have to invest in myself because that helps me grow the business. That's a business perspective, yeah. not a life yeah. perspective. Like, for example, imagine if you're 70 and you've not invested in any assets or nothing and you've got state pension. There's a time when you can't keep working physically. Yeah, yeah. opposed to investing in certain assets which hopefully pay back us in the future. But I, yeah, but yeah. from a business perspective, yeah. 100%, then yeah, asset-wise. That's why body still has to keep going in order to get the business to grow. Vegan superpowers. Yeah, or go vegan. Then, then. Would you reckon, Louis? I'm going for it. <laughs> I'm with some steak. Uh, Vegan superpowers. We well, seem to be doing all right so far. But yeah, I do know what you mean. But it's interesting, like, I found, you are right, like, when when going plant-based, and albeit I do still eat some shit over the last few months, but like, when I'm on it, your mind's on it as well. More clarity, you make decisions quicker, okay. you get stuff done, you just feel like, do you know what I mean? You I think that's feel. where we get that 100% is easy, 99% is hard. Yeah, yeah. All in or nothing. Yeah. That switch. That's the yeah. switch. That's yeah. how I yeah. am. Like, do you know what I do? So on the switch. Yeah, yeah. I am. Yeah. I I'll, think we all I'll are. train and I'll like eat well, right? For a month. Yeah. I'll have one chocolate bar and then I'll think, fuck it, I might as well have ten. <laughs> <laughs> and, and a tub of ice cream. Then tomorrow, <laughs> free tomorrow, I'm having a burger. That's literally what you do. I just go all the time. I just go, I, I just full on switch. Free like, for a quiz. Full on. Yeah. yeah. For <laughs> Fill me up. Where's that bag of sweets? I'll have a lot. Like, yeah, I'm very yeah. much a switch when it comes to that stuff. That's why, like, I found it easier to do bodybuilding diet rather than moderation elsewhere. Like yeah, I had I to really so. work on moderation by doing seven different bodybuilding shows where, okay, it's over three years. So it was like three, 12, 20, 24 week diets, whatever it was. Like, that must have been, so what was your seven body over fat three years. At that time. I, don't, I never tested so that it. That must have been fairly consecutive. Like, uh, it was over a four year period, oh. three years of competing, so one year off in the middle. Right. It's not in the middle. But like the stress, because that must be, Fucking yeah, hard, I'm still paying, paying for it now. Fuck. And then, yeah. like using gear for that last show, I didn't use it for any of the other ones. But why did you use it for the last one? Because I thought I needed it. Really? Did and you? No, it was an ego. And then again, like, why did I get into bodybuilding to create muscle to give me confidence? But the only thing that gives you confidence is up here. Mm. You don't need a like shell to get confident. But shell, good work. The shell of muscle, yeah, like Ninja shell. Turtle, yeah, the shell, the Donatello. Yeah. Um, but like all that time like you're working towards something and you know there's a start and a finish it's easy to know that yeah like it's easy to know you're going to have to be disciplined for this amount of time but after every single like end of the diet per the show the next two weeks wouldn't matter or i would continue but at that end it was like i remember first show 2008 beijing olympics was on and i had like 24 hours of just eating everything in sight i got off stage and like so this is the end of discipline and there was like so many different sh- uh, shops around Bogan Regis ended up getting a subway with like a uh, like beef subway and it was like a lean beef one with ketchup and I was like yeah I just want more 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 ketchup <sighs> and then I just didn't stop eating yeah. and that's to the point where you feel sick you carry on eating that you framework's gone in yeah because yeah. it was just the discipline which shows that it's not sustainable so how so did like, you actually feel when you're on stage did you feel like absolute primed at that well, point I wouldn't have been able to probably run about 100 meters really i remember like you do all the poses and stuff and like you look awesome you do the poses and like there's the most muscular way you're squeezing all every muscle and like uh, my eyes were just like is this blacking out I, I can't hold this much longer and you think well you've pushed yourself discipline wise to do it like you're not sleeping you've got the sex drive of like a cat like being like a cat or something <laughs> like it's just nothing there going back to like why you got into bodybuilding do you feel confident now? I feel much more yourself? confident. When we talk about 100% of how confident I could be, I think I'm about 75, 80. Yeah. But back then, people would probably think you look confident, but you're at like 20%. Yeah, you know? no, I'm sorry, I relate to that. Yeah, like it's, it's easy to do 100% with that sort of thing. And that's why it took a lot longer to, well, even now, like I'm, the things I work with with my clients is only over the last year been, that I'm working on myself in that bit. Mm takes a long while to get into that. Hence why it's not just a straight, I'm in, with like, when you said about a thousand burpees, like, I don't know. In fact, I think it was like United were playing, so. 
Um, but like, I wouldn't do that without prior training to it because I've made that commitment to undo all the shit I've done from back then and then trying to do two marathons in a month mm. because again it was like I'll go as far away from the bodybuilding stuff as I can yeah but like do you when you say 75% so something that like I not relate to but like I've always come across as a very confident person all through my life even when I was younger right and like um, and I suppose I am relatively but inside you're all you're all got your own things yeah but like I now know the reason why I do certain things is because of my lack of confidence and I try and recognize that like is there do you do that as well is there things where you go like so like for example I I know and I can't remember who I don't know if that's Louis I don't know if we had this conversation like I recognize myself when I feel the need to drop certain things in a conversation to give myself like a, um, bit, a, boost, a yeah. bit of a boost like I'll go I'll, I'll just make like someone who I might randomly meet right or I'll be in a shop or something they'll be talking I'll well, and I'll yeah. just be like oh yeah well I'm a property developer so I was doing this just just that little like slip and then afterwards I'll tell myself I was like what a dick why did you even have to say that like, like, like why did you like, have to say it I remember writing in my book like, who the fuck gives a shit if you've written a book yeah like, yeah it doesn't matter yeah like, and that's that self confidence yeah. where actually actually I don't really have it not fall over at the same time yeah I don't actually have the confidence and that's, that's things that I have to work on so I'm like thank you but I, I recognise it so that's a that's a good start but um, do you know what's really cool like in those in, interactions and stuff when you've got the, the urge to say something like that and you just don't say anything yeah, yeah that's, sit, that's confidence you're like, oh, that's confidence, confidence. Yeah. Yeah. when you fully know yeah. but then part of me right so what I tell myself I'll catch myself in those kind of situations, right? Mm. And then I'll I'll digest that, and I'll be like, oh, why did I say that? And then I'll be like, right, I can't. I need to work to the point where I don't need to say those yeah, things. Yeah, but then what I do, I go, once I've sold these two houses, and once I've built two more houses, mm. I'll know who I am, and I don't have to tell anyone. Like, there's always a point yeah, where there's something like, different when you get. To yeah, that do point. you know, exactly? So there's not like there's you move not the goalposts. You always move the goalposts. So I, then I think like, oh, actually, I'm probably not going to be confident when I'm there. But that's like the point where you've got to be like, I need I need to work on that. Like, Sam, yeah, me, me and you spoke about this a lot, where you said, being at your age now, you feel like you should have done a lot more. Mm. You, had, you feel like you're looking, for, you feel like you're supposed to do something, but feel you like, haven't. I feel like I'm running out of time. Yeah, so I, 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 I don't agree with it, but it's similar like feeling. 25. Then, similar, similar, yeah, that's what I mean. <laughs> similar thing, like, I, when I, the last time I could probably say I was depressed was when I was about 20, 26. And thought, I'm getting towards 30. What have I actually achieved? I've made it look like I've achieved a lot, yeah. but I haven't actually achieved a lot in, in, in terms of what, in relation to what I think I can you do. Want to achieve and whenever it. people tell, and it, every time someone else says to you, "Oh, you've done, you've done this," you feel like an imposter. It doesn't mm. feel like you read, and you make excuses for, "I got lucky with that one," or "That one was just me doing this," "That was one was just me doing this," and you think, "I can't wait until I've got something that I can that's tangible and I can say." Yeah, well, because I now do this. But what is that? And you thing? think well, well, you think it's, it's going to be a thing, right? Yeah. So for me, that was then opening the first restaurant, getting it open, and I thought, now surely I've got something. And you go to them, and you're like, but that, that person's got a restaurant group, and they're two years younger than me. And then you go right on this. Then you then you, you realise, oh, I thought that when I had something tangible, I would then feel better, but you don't at all. Yeah. It's all an inside job. And even you get no matter what point you get to, and I have conversations with people who are like way more successful than me. And then so we have the same sort of conversation, they're like, still look like I've done anything. When there's to the outside world, they look at you like, how can you even do what you're doing? Yeah. But to you, because it doesn't feel like anything. And I tell you what else, is because to you, and like, so when people, yeah, people say, oh, you guys have done really well or whatever, it's like, oh yeah, cool. But because you see yourself level 10, but actually you're at level five, yeah, yeah. Judge um, yourself on a you're like, level. like, to them, they're going, this cunt's at level 10. Right, actually, like it's I see five, myself yeah. at level. It's five, yeah. yeah, do you yeah. know what I mean? Because, yeah. because I see myself <laughs> relative. As well. I know I'm going to get here. Yeah. So yeah. because I'm here now, that don't mean anything to me. But from the exterior, that might look. So that's why, like those external things, don't give you any confidence. Yeah. It's all, it's all an inside job. Yeah. And I think, I think nine times out of ten, most people who appear to be confident, they're just appearing to be confident because <laughs> everyone shares these universal. Do you know what? The um, American gangster. 
the loudest one in the room is the weakest one in the room. Yeah. That's confidence, man. Like, do you know what I mean? And this, I always said, I said this so many times about like, after I'd done ayahuasca, it was, I sold my watch and then my thing now, going f like since then, and it will be an ongoing process is like, imagine, imagine someone like, being the person who, when you walk into a room, without having any fancy stuff, without having a fancy car keys, without having a fucking amazing body out, without having any of the things that might look amazing, that people just know that you're some sort of guy. Do you know what I mean? You That's that. carry that confidence. You just carry it. And yeah. going back to that energy. It's literally, it's that, it's literally that, same, back that energy. same thing. It's like that energy when you yeah. walk into a room. And I think like... Nice aura, bro. Yeah. <laughs> 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 it's it's, it's being, being that person is, is the real confidence. Mm. And, and, and I'm learning that I, no one needs those other things. Or certain, tell a lie, certain people will always need those things. But I want to be someone who don't need those things, mm -hmm. but still walk into a room and still carry some sort of presence. Do you know what I mean? Like, that's confidence, I think. Quiet, humble confidence. I, like, really struggle with it. So, so I'm physically, if you tell me anything in the world physically, within, like, not setting world records, but, like, I will genuinely believe I can do it. Like, I do not have any doubt whatsoever. And I, but I think physical is my comfort zone. So, like, the things that people think are hard, like, I know, running 100 commas, that didn't even seem like a thing. It was just a thing. Like, I know I can put myself through those. That sort of pain is really comfortable for me. Yeah. But, like, the business side of things or the, like, that's the relationship the relationship side I'm really comfortable with as well. It's the business side where I have, like, so lack of confidence in it's myself. It's a different realm, isn't it? it? Like, I'm very good at, if someone tells me what to do, despite all of my not wanting to do what people tell me what to do, if, like, in a job, if you use a framework, I will smash that because there's a proper framework for it. What I really struggle with, like confidence-wise, is when like there's no when there's no framework. I'm yeah. like, oh, oh, what well, I have to make it up the framework. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, this is where, and I really struggle in that. Like, it's like I think well, you all kind of said it the other day when we did our review. It's like I set such a low bar for what I actually want to achieve. So like financially, I just said like I think it was like twenty k a year, even though I was earning like a lot significantly more than that. Yeah six months ago but then I put 20 because I'm now doing it for yeah, myself yeah. So it's easier I, I was yeah. like I'll just put 20k or whatever because <laughs> like yeah. that was like I was like oh that, I thought that was being like quite bold and like <laughs> but yeah like if you look at the flip side of it like this someone, is a year by the way yeah like <laughs> the, yeah yeah like, you had to say it out loud yeah. okay maybe it's a bit ridiculous but I felt confident, comfortable saying that I guess but yeah at the same time if you said can you run six marathons in six days, I'd be like, yeah, of, course. Yeah, of course. Like, I will comfortably say I can I do that. I thought it was the exact same thing. We're all running. I was, thinking, I was running, I was thinking, people can't do this shit, but they're earning, like, they know how to earn loads of money or have a successful business. And they're thinking, they look at what I'm doing going, oh, I can never do that. I and mean, we flip it and think the same thing, look at other people. Yeah. Mad, man. I was thinking about public speaking as well, like how much that fazed me. And then now it's like, it's easy. It's not a thing, The comfort yeah. zone. As long as I'm it. talking on health or something I'm, I'm confident at, but even going up on a stage and actually just standing in silence. But I remember I was talking about having a morning routine and I'd done the, the um, Yes Group talk. And this is just so wouldn't be, I wrapped it in my wedding and stuff, so music was, was a comfort zone thing, but I wouldn't have done this on stage. And I was just, I said like, we should sing in the morning. I just get up, chuck on Pharrell's happy and be like, I'm so happy, clap along. Like, <laughs> I would never have done that before, but it did not phase me because it was part of the talk. Like it is a comfort zone, but it could be like five or fifty or like five hundred people. Like putting me in front of five people, like and doing a presentation. Like if you told me to do a presentation on health here, I'd be so uncomfortable because I know you. Yeah. I don't know why. No, I'm uh, the same. Uh, talking to people you know is yeah, so much harder than talking like to a random group. It's that comfort it. zone. So yeah. like, it's even on a personal level, I think that, that rings true as well. Like mm. it's easier to talk. Sometimes easier to talk to a stranger like therapy for example yeah. albeit they're trained professionals to listen but like it's easier sometimes to unload onto someone like that than it is like I think I I I struggle with like uh, I can me and so say about this but like I can sit here and talk with you guys about all sorts right anything then when it comes to like opening up to like my parents or to Sophie I'm not as good I'm not as much of a talker at all. I find it awkward. It's close to the home, that's why. Like it's and talking about feelings with someone who you're involved with, I just find awkward. 
I, d I don't know what it is, but on the up, on the other side, I could talk to you guys about if I like putting a finger up my ass or whatever, like anything. <laughs> I, I, I generally yeah, there was that conversation. Yeah. I generally yeah. don't care, right? Yeah. Do not care. Yeah. But you even talk to us about feelings. Yeah. You literally talk yeah, to yeah. us about feelings. Because it's not about because it's not with you. It's not. Yeah. You know, and even though it's being recorded to go out to people as well, like doesn't phase you. No. I, I, yeah. But if you haven't that Everyone, one conversation, everyone's human. Like, do you know what I mean? And yeah. I think I've learned probably through psychedelics in a way that. Almost everything we feel is universal, man. Like, do you know what I mean? So I don't really care about anything, but on a very personal level, I just find it really awkward. It's like, it's up. So it's the same thing as in like, when you know someone, that's more awkward than being on stage. But I was gonna lead on, when you were talking about like your money earning the 20 grand, I think that's like, how we were like kind of chuckling at 20,000. There'll be people out there who don't earn that a year and have two kids to fucking And they're leave. happy. And yeah. they're happy. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? But also, All on the flip side yeah. of that, like when you talk, when any people talk about money, and I I think like, when same as anything, if you build something up, that you've created a mental barrier in your head before you've even done it. 100%. So if you're like, oh you my work. God, how am I going to save 20 yeah. grand? Like, yeah. oh my God, it's going to take me years. Bloody, bloody, The grand. energy you're using by saying all that and thinking that is literally like making it You longer. might as well just put that Until in. Until you actually do it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Where, where you just say it blase. Like, if you were, like, we do it all the time. Like, you probably sit there sometimes. Like, we talk about something like, right, yeah, we might have to raise a couple hundred grand or whatever. And it's like, it's just normal. I've got no ideas, no one I can just now ring and go like, do, 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 do you know what I mean? But, when it's not as much of a thing, you just kind of get on and do you it. You increase the probability of it happening. Yeah. 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 yeah I think yeah. I have the thing you have with feelings about money, because when I used to work in the industry... <laughs> we could be such and a good person to, together, Tom. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, I was like, obviously working in a proper corporate industry and talking about millions of pounds when it was someone else's money and doing this, putting these deals together and there was no problem, but then it's my own, I'm like, oh. Uh, yeah, it's yeah, very different. Yeah. Yeah. As well, with money, especially here around Norwich, like the average wage is a lot lower than most of the other places around. Like, yeah, especially well, not most, a lot of places around the country. There's some lower um, income places. So when you say like, oh, I want to earn five, ten, fifteen k a month, like people, are, what the fuck, like that, that's then, not possible. I find that so strange. I've never had like anyone say to me. Although I don't. I mean, you're in an industry, I guess, where. I, mean, I, I don't know, but like with property, for example, numbers are thrown around all the time. Yeah. Like that's a thing that coaches do is like everyone, ha as a coach, you have to earn 10 grand a month. Like, it's just a thing that everyone says. Yeah. Like, oh, 10 grand a month, 10 grand a month, 10 grand a month. But like that's 120 grand a year, which is a fucking good wage, right? But half that, five grand a month, still is a lot of money I think yeah. that's 60 grand a year that's not out of the realms is it like that's what a lot of I think quite a few people in Norwich will earn that mate a decent plumber will probably earn 50, 50 grand K, a year yeah. I mean in London they're on about 80k yeah uh, plumbers are more than I was Pimlico pay yeah. 80k for a yeah. plumber on the, on the book so in Norwich a good plumber could earn 50k so that doesn't sound too bad do you know what I mean but I've never had anyone like if I've said I want to achieve this on a money scale, like batter an eyelid, really. Mine's not the monthly thing, but what you charge. Like when you say, like my lowest package is five hundred pounds, and it goes upwards from there. Right. They're like, well, what the fuck are you doing? But yeah. then I, I think that's still like comparing me, like as a personal trainer compared to a health coach. Mm. So what's what's the average price? Like 35, 40? 35. Yeah. An so hour. Like, five minutes. Yeah. 45 minutes, please. But in London, that's immediately 60. Like. Yeah, so it, it depends where you're yeah, at. Relative, yeah. But how many people, I don't work with as many people in Norwich. And again, that's something that was an ego thing, getting hit by that, I suppose. And it gives confidence in a way yeah. as well, because you're thinking, oh, maybe... But when you've had people pay like a thousand pounds a month, like soon, like... But I, I think people sometimes, since so I've lived in London for 12 years, come back this year, what I find typically of like people, particularly within my family more so, is like they don't appreciate value as much. They see cost, they don't yeah. see value, which I think is a more like in London everyone everyone London. sees like a value of something. So it's like okay, I pay a hundred pounds for a gym membership in London. It's a really nice gym. 
Like, I get a sauna every day. I'm pretty chuffed with that. Like, yeah, it's yeah. relative to my like salary and everything. That sounds all right. Mm. But if you said you paid a hundred pounds a month to a gym membership in Norfolk, everyone would be like, "Where are you going to the gym? What, what do they yeah, do there?" Is, like, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, like. So it's like it's a relative thing. But then yeah. it's seeing value. Like your service, if if you're adding five hundred pounds worth of value, it's actually a bargain. Like because you're getting a value out of it. But I think I found people like in Norwich struggle to see value over cost. But yeah, also, that's what it is. Yeah. yeah. Also, I think like. As, as much of a broad, I think I've got a fairly open mind in regards to business and opportunities and scaling and stuff, but like if you're not in an industry, some things might just seem astronomical. If, if, if like, you're working if, like if, a normal if, job, if not, like, yeah. But not even like, it's unlike a scale. Like, for example, right, there might be, I'm going to make this up, so I don't quote me on this, but there might be, for example, I'll tell you what. A unit, there might be a unit over there that sells mugs, right? And I might go, fucking how many people buy mugs? But they've got a warehouse full of them and they send them all around the world, do you know what I mean? But in my head, I'm yeah. thinking, how can someone make a business? Yeah, yeah. So unless you're in it, you don't understand the scale of what's possible. Even if you've got a global vision of your business, to understand something else, you go, God, how many people really do that? Like, do you know what I mean? Like, so I think there might be a little bit of that intertwined with that as well because I, I have that and I've had that a few times where people have said things and like I'm always telling people fucking do it cool do it do it but at the same time I'm like wow that's a lot like I didn't realise that many people would yeah. be into that or whatever do you know what I mean I suppose that, and also comparing it comparing it to like average wage around there like when I look at like when I was a manager in, in insurance I was what 1400 a month which is nothing in reality but, like what the cost of living is so if you take that that's like nearly half of their wage to like why you shouldn't work for your money is it like yeah you have, like as soon as you take that a job back to assets man. yeah like if you're exchanging your hours for for time money, for money time for money it's like it's never the way you're going to get rich and then like, we look at like judging success as you said about success this year on a financial scale hasn't been as successful as previous years but on a growth scale, it's been fucking successful. It's why you have to look yeah. at. It's why you have to look at anything yeah, that's that. You done that to me the other day, didn't you? That analogy. Money can't buy that. Either. You're pulling back that catapult, ready to yeah. into the next yeah. sort of thing. Is that is that one of those scenarios? But someone, it's probably quite a common thing, but I heard the other day on a podcast, and it was like, wealth is basically time. Mm-hmm. Like money, money. Your ba- wealth is buying time, basically. Yeah. Like if, if all if everything stopped now. What are you gonna do? Like wealth is if everything stopped, I'd still live till I'm a hundred and I'm cool. Bugsy, I'm, Bugsy Malone said that he said being rich or wealth is just being able to wake up when he wants. Yeah. And financial freedom, isn't it? That's what you were saying. That's all. Into. Have you seen but that? To me, it's about getting money. So I could easily go out now. Let's like, say this time next month, I could easily go out and go right. I'm gonna get a brand new truck. I'm gonna buy this. I'm gonna rent this. How I'm gonna do this? Right now, my expenses are four grand a month. So now I need to earn. 80, 100 grand a year. Yeah. Or you could go, I'm going to keep a van, I'm not going to do that, Reinvest. Hang that up, invest in that, right, my monthly expenditures are a thousand pound, so now I only need to earn to yeah, like when have you say about 20 grand a year, like what if you had an actual lifestyle that only involved cool. needing to earn so if you had a boat a paid off yeah so like, like what I'm actually about to do, like yeah. buy a yeah. boat so I've got no it's monthly relative. expenses, it's like my expenses will be like couple hundred pounds a month for like mooring food fees. and mooring fee, all that stuff. Yeah. So say like five grand a year will probably keep me alive now. So then I've so actually got fifteen grand, grand in yeah. the bank like so it's all to reinvest yeah. in the next thing. Like yeah. yeah. It's all relative to the lifestyle you want to lead. Like yeah. that that film in time with Justin Timberlake. Yeah. 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 And they actually have time like a yeah. currency in of time on their wrist. So when it gets to zero they're dead. And they, they buy time off each other by swapping time. Sick. That's a good. It's another one of those films where actually, if you think about it, it's like, Much see, that's where all I want. Like, I, it's interesting. Me and Tom, like, so we have done this kind of end of year kind of thing, and he, we're basically sitting like Tom saying, like, I'm, we need to think about actually what we want to do and where we want to go and stuff. And like, I get bored. I like doing different things, but I just need the security to be able to do that. That's all it is. It goes back to the thing we said about fitness. It's like. If someone says to me, "Do you want to do this?" I do not want the finance. Like, I don't want to be not fit enough to do it, and I don't want to not have enough money to do it. So, Perfect. if you say actually in like fifteen years' time you want to climb Everest, and I'm available at that time, and I'd be like, yeah. and I couldn't you because I hadn't earned enough days. money, yeah. I'd be really upset at myself because then yeah. I'm holding back a life experience. Yeah, probably going to climb Everest, but like you know, like that would be annoying. Like I don't put Everest is probably an extreme example because that's a significant amount of money. I know what you mean, but like 
Like, I'm even like Mont Blanc this year. Imagine if I couldn't get two grand together to go and do Mont Blanc, which is something that I've wanted to do my whole life. Like, you don't want to ever have to say no for financial fitness yeah. or anything. You, know you want to say no forward. because you want to say no, not because yeah. you can't. I said this the other day about capitalism and like the thing that the the problem I have with money, not the problem of the the like I'm, I'm all right because I know I will get to a point where I will have the opportunity to have the money to do whatever I want to a degree, and I'm not gonna. But like. I think it's such a shame that so many life experiences don't get to get shared because of money. Mm -hmm. So so many people won't get to experience what it's like to go on a plane. Yeah. For example, Some or snowboarding, like yeah. or because they don't have the money to pay for that. And I just think that's such a shame. Going to space. Yeah. I, yeah. That. I to be honest about that, that's one of the things I'm kind of I'm pinning on the fact that I will have. A good pension, and I'll spend it all to go into space because I think that by the time we're getting older, that'll mm. then be yeah, like be yeah. commercial thing. flights. Yeah. Be commercial flights, but they'll be ridiculously expensive. But like, I I, I will happily spend that money to you have get that frozen and put before on I yeah, before, before I, I, yeah, years. <laughs> before I pass into the next life, whatever that yeah. may be. On that note, we should wrap it up. Should we? Yeah, I've got a head. Oh, yeah. <gasps> that was good. I think it. What's the time on there? Always a pleasure. Uh, one three five. Oh, oh it's not too bad. I thought we were going for about like two, three hours. Yeah, I thought. It was so I think well. we did. Just some of it we didn't record. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> like an hour before. Yeah. I think I just listened to all that. I'm just gonna do it. Cool. On that note. Cheers. Let's stop. Over and out.